Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing two Disney-themed book reviews, the first being Once Upon a Dream by Liz Braswell and Fairest of All by Serena Valentino. In Once Upon a Dream by Liz Braswell, Princess Aurora is stuck in a dream world of the evil Maleficent's devising. Prince Philip's kiss was supposed to wake her up and restore the kingdom. It's up to Aurora to be her own hero and save her kingdom before it's too late. Once Upon a Dream is part of the Twisted Tales series put out by Disney Press, and the thing about these books is that they pretty much ask a what-if sort of scenario, and they twist some little element of, of what you know from the original cartoon. Uh, so yeah, this one is asking, what if the Sleeping Beauty never woke up? So this is what you got to know about this book. The events of Sleeping Beauty have happened. So where this book opens is that Prince Philip, he has just defeated Maleficent as the dragon. He's gone up to the tower to, to kiss Princess Aurora awake. But when he kisses her, he too falls into a deep enchanted sleep. Uh-oh. So this whole book, what you have, you are then taken into this dream world, essentially, that Maleficent has everybody under. You know, that now now Prince Philip is in there, Princess, Princess Aurora has been in there, the whole kingdom is in this dream world and whatnot. So it's up to Aurora to, first of all, she needs to figure out that she is in a dream world because for the longest time she feels like this is her reality. She knows no other reality. The dream world is her reality to her. So she first has to realize, okay, this is not reality. And then her next course is, is to pretty much be like, okay, I need to take charge. I need to take action. I need to save my kingdom before it's too late. And Maleficent just keeps us all trapped under this curse and whatnot. So yeah, that's where you go with this book. So, for starters, I really loved the premise of this book. I loved this whole idea of, okay, uh, Prince Philip, the kiss doesn't work. <laughs> uh, the, the kiss doesn't work. Everybody is stuck in this, this dream world. This is their version of reality. I, I love the premise. I thought it was really creative and clever, really interesting, like a real, like a, just a really great twist to the story. And what I also liked about this twist is that it, 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 it makes Aurora a much more active heroine, if you will. It makes her much more active in the story and it, it forces her to, to re reflect on herself and it forces her to take charge and for her to be the hero, for her to save the day, and for her to save the kingdom, rather than it all kind of falling on Prince Philip, if you will. And another problem that this book tackles, I think in just a really nice way, is because when you are watching the cartoon, Philip and Aurora just first love at first sight. You know, they immediately just lay eyes on each other and they're automatically in love. So this book, it definitely addresses that. Once Aurora and Philip do meet in the dream world, they do spend a lot of it going on this adventure with one another to, to try and, and get the kingdom back and whatnot, and they're able to talk to each other, you know, for like for real talk to each other about deep things. Um, and they get to learn more about each other, you know, their, their, their backgrounds and their traumas and whatnot their inner demons. Um, it, it does. It forces them to connect, yeah, I think, in a, a much different way than how they connect, like in the, the cartoon, if you will. So, so yeah, I really like how that kind of transpires over the course of the book. It, it, it makes their relationship m much more 
multi-dimensional, I guess, you know, rather than the one-dimensional sort of love we see in the cartoon. So even though there were elements of this book that I did enjoy, the premise being really the big bulk of what I loved about this this book and the better developed relationship between Aurora and Philip, the thing is where I think this book falls apart is definitely more the writing. Um, uh, for starters, the book to me I think is way too lengthy. Um, I was just really surprised how long this book was. Um, uh, once Aurora does escape Maleficent's clutches and then she's out in the wilds of the dream world, if you will, as she's trying to, you know, figure out how to reclaim a reality, essentially, and how to defeat Maleficent, when her and Philip are out there, um, it's it just feels like it's a never-ending series of obstacles that the two of them have to face. Now, of course, for just for events to happen in this book, they do need to face some obstacles, but it kind of reaches a point that there's obstacle after obstacle after obstacle after obstacle after obstacle and it gets a little repetitive and monotonous after a while and at a point it just feels like each obstacle is not really providing much of anything and if, if anything it almost feels a little repetitive like okay haven't we kind of gone over this you know because each obstacle that they face is meant for Philip and Aurora to realize something about themselves, you know, so have some sort of epiphany. And like I mentioned, after a while, their epiphanies that they have either about themselves or about each other, after a while, it does feel a little repetitive. So yeah, as a result, it, it makes this book feel much, much longer than what it should be, I think. I feel like some of the obstacles that they encounter could have easily been cut out. Another issue that I had with this book was that it felt a wee bit too modern. <laughs> now, I know the, you know, because this book is intended for more like kids and a young adult audience, obviously. So yeah, some of the stuff is going to be a little modernized so, you know, younger people can connect with it. But still, I, I had just a nitpick with that. Uh, Aurora and Philip, the way they talk and communicate, just their manners, mannerisms and whatnot, just everything about them. They felt like modern day teenagers from the way they would just talk, from their lingo, um, how they would think. And yeah, I mean, at some point in this book, somebody mentions something about it's the 13th century, but this book never felt like anything took place in the 13th century, for crying out loud. <laughs> and that just really caused a problem with me because I just kept having questions like, okay, what is what is Liz Braswell trying to do with this book? Is she trying to create a a dark satirical comedy with this book, which would explain the modern way Aurora and Philip act, or is she trying to be more like serious and deep? which we kind of do see with some stuff with, you know, Aurora, you know, realizing some things about herself and her past, and even Philip kind of facing some of his own demons and whatnot. And the thing is, this book, I, I just don't think it could have been both at all. I really feel like Liz Braswell needed to kind of pick a side. This book either needed to be more dark and serious, or yeah, it, it needed to be a straight out like dark satirical comedy because this book it, it, it there there's more moments of being weirdly humorous like darkly humorous and whatnot and it just and it does it just kind of clashes with some of the more deep serious moments and yeah that's kind of my conflict with the book if that makes sense I suppose the book needed to be one or the other it needed to be either a dark satirical comedy or a deep and serious thought broken book you know so overall, I really enjoyed this book in general. My review may almost sound like I didn't like it that much, but for the most part, I still liked it. You know, I still considered it average. Um, and it was, it was still nice to see Aurora, you know, be the very proactive heroine and that she's the one who needs to save the day and not everything is all on Philip, you know. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend this book if you like all things Sleeping Beauty, if you want to see a more active heroine with Aurora and whatnot. Um, so yeah, check this out if you wish. 
So, I'll be moving on to the next Disney-themed book. Fairest of All by Serena Valentino is an origin story to the evil queen who cursed Snow White. So, yeah, the synopsis for this book, very short, brief, to the point. There's really not much else with this book, to be quite honest. Uh, it is, it is a straight out origin story for the evil queen from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. And you guys, I actually really, really quite enjoyed this book. Um, especially, I, I feel like I enjoyed a good 70, for, a good 75 percent of this book. Uh, I'll talk about the last 25% of this book because there were just some things that happened in the last 25% of this book that I was a little frustrated and irritated with. And But yeah, for the most part, the the, the initial 75% of this book, I actually was pleasantly surprised how much I was enjoying this. So, what you need to know about this book as you're kind of heading into it, I suppose. You're introduced to the Queen. Uh, she is only ever referred to as the queen. She's never given a name or anything. But you're introduced to her. Introduced to her. Um, she comes from very humble beginnings. Her father um, makes mirrors and whatnot. You could probably guess where that's going with the mirror if you know the cartoon. And through chance she meets the king of this of this land and the two of them fall in love and marry and of course the king has a a little girl named Snow White his his previous wife has died tragically so yeah uh, the queen is now the stepmother to Snow White so yeah if you know the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, your immediate reaction as you're heading into this book is to automatically assume, oh yeah, things aren't going to be good between the Queen and Snow White. There's, there's going to be a rivalry and bitterness and hatred there from the very beginning. But no, that's not the case, which is kind of strange as you're starting this novel, because the Queen and Snow White they actually have a very tight mother-daughter bond uh, throughout the first 75% of this book. They, they do genuinely love each other, they care for each other, and Snow White really, she, she grows attached to the Queen. She sees her as her new mother figure since her own mother has died and whatnot. Um, and I did, I really loved kind of that little twist there, you know, because I was, I was heading into this book thinking, oh, they're, they're not going to get along. They're going to just immediately hate each other. The queen is going to be jealous from Snow White from the get-go and whatnot. But yeah, like I said, it's not the case. And so everything is going well and good. Like I mentioned, I, I loved the first 75% 70 of this book. And there is like a like a tragedy that kind of happens kind of midway in there or so uh, that really sets up the next phase of so we can get to why things start going downhill between Snow White and the Evil Queen and whatnot. And I really loved the characterization of the Queen as in interpreted by Serena Valentino in this book. Um, the Queen, as I mentioned, she does come from those humble origins and whatnot, um, but she does have a bit of vanity in her, um, but she also has kindness and compassion. And as I mentioned, at, at kind of at the midpoint of this book, a tragedy does happen, and some of the Queen's more negative attributes, like her vanity, like her obsession with her appearance, um, this tragedy does kind of enhance those uh, character flaws that she has really exasperates some of her her problems and whatnot and it's kind of through all of this happening she becomes obsessed with a certain magic mirror if you will if you know where that's going <laughs> and because of this tragedy that happens she really lets her grief get to her and really bother her and she lets the power of this magic mirror really latch onto her and whatnot and yeah that's where you do start to get into the events of what you know from the animated cartoon and whatnot and I was really kind of uh, surprised by the fact that this book is entirely pretty much an origin story um, the events of what you know from the cartoon uh, that's really all kind of handled and rushed through 
in probably the last 50 pages of this book. And yeah, this book is not very long. It's a very, very quick, very quick and fast-paced book, if you will. Um, so yeah, you don't even get to some of that stuff until the last 50 pages, which is kind of uh, surprising in some ways. Uh, Serena Valentina really spent a hefty majority of this book really getting you to understand and connect with the queen before she becomes the evil queen and then you know from the cartoon then she goes out and gives Snow White the poisoned apple and whatnot try trying to kill her and whatnot so yeah it's kind of the origin story of what leads up to that you know why why if if, if the queen loved Snow White so much why just all of a sudden does she, does she give her this poisoned apple and whatnot what are the events that lead to that so, yeah, Serena Valentino, she, like I said, she spends a good hefty majority with this origin story, and I think she does a really fantastic, wonderful job setting all of that up and really diving into the story. And then, yeah, as I mentioned, the last 50 is the cartoon, and she does, she rushes through it so, so quickly, and it, it, it is, it's also really rushed and kind of hectic in places, and it's like, I wish she had taken her time a little bit better with the writing because everything else before that was just so good. So yeah, overall, I actually, weirdly enough, ended up enjoying this book. I wasn't sure what to expect. I wasn't sure if I would like it as much as I would, and I actually ended up being pleasantly surprised with this. Um, it's, like I said, it's short, quick, to the point, um, and I, I just really like what Serena Valentino did with this book, and it is, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a story about a woman's obsession with vanity. It's, it's a story about what grief does to a person, what that bitterness does. If you let grief and bitterness take control of you and let that consume you, and it, that in turn will essentially turn you into a monster, if you will. I definitely recommend this if you love all things Disney, you love Snow White retellings of a sort. Uh, yeah, a gate, uh, definitely a great gateway for young readers since it's very easy to read and very short as well. So that's it for my book review on these two Disney themed books. In the comments below, have you guys read these books? What do you think about them if you have read them? Um, that's it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye guys.